Hey guys, this is your buddy Horse the Cuffs here. I'm doing stages four and five of Castlevania Rondo and Blood. And let me tell you fuckers, this is a bitch. Oh my god, I have not fucking been challenged like this in a long, long time. Uh, you know, I have spent probably five to eight hours mastering every stage you know stage four and stage five individually another two or three just straight up fighting the boss it's been a fucking nightmare uh, been worth it though it's been a challenge i hope i can you know i hope i can pull the trigger on this and beat dracula i am hoping to god i can get there dog but i don't know if necessarily i'll be able to but i am sure as hell gonna try for you folks now when i say master what i mean i want to get from the beginning to the final boss, or to the to the stage boss, with all my lives intact, and they give you very few lives, and I want to have at least half my health bar left on that on that first life. And let me tell you guys, that is a harder thing to do than you might think. This game is brutal. This is traditional Castlevania level difficulty, and I ain't fooling. This ain't no Igarashi crap, man. Right here, I mean, I love Igarashi's crap, but this ain't no Igarashi stuff right here. All right. This is fucking balls to the wall, fucking 8 16 bit Castlevania shit up in this. And it is hard. Okay. So, we are right now in stage 4. And like I said, it is a nightmare. But it's it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of branching paths here. And you're, what you're going to see here, okay. I, like I said, put 8 or so hours on this stage. And when I, what really finally did it for me, I fought this boss probably dozens of times. And I could not do it, dog. I could not. Finally, I died. And I glitched, kind of. I kind of glitched. And I got to a stage where I could see I'm spawning in the floor. And I roll right into the void. And it spawns me back pretty close to him. So even though I, I had one life less, I was like, fuck it, you know. Maybe this is my lucky run. I'm not going to stop recording. This is, this, is it, this is it, baby. We're doing this. This is it. Woo! Get your game face on. Okay. So... Fucking, I'm right near the boss. I'm down a life, but I got decent health up until this point. So I think we can fucking do this. Uh, you know, fucking... I finally, finally, after fighting this guy right here, this red knight, again, dozens of fucking times, and dying to him plenty of times, I find a good strategy. You'll notice I'm being Maria. Uh, you know, fucking... I've heard tell that Maria is this game's easy mode. It's still balls hard, but she... After going through everything like intermittently as Richter and Maria, Maria is definitely, if you're not the best at video games in the fucking world, this is where you want to be up with Maria. Because fucking she is definitely much more mobile and her attacks are much more forgiving than Victor. I mean, or Richter, uh, you will you will go flying. You'll go flying like some fucking Mighty Morphin Pedal Ranger shit if you get hit. But you're going to get hit less because... A, you know how more, much more vulnerable you are, and B, your mobility is so, it's worlds beyond, Richter's, worlds beyond, alright? So, you got your doves, you got your ice cream, you got your fucking magical little animal friends, you are going to do this, and she is the most unlikely of vampire hunters, she's a 12 year old girl, but, you know, she's pretty badass, so... I am going up here. I'm going to fucking do this. There's a secret path right down there uh, in that corner where that was. Uh, there's a like a bomb that you can ignite with your attack and take a secret path. But this is really, this is the way you want to go. It's the, it's the easiest, simplest route to the boss. So it's your best, best shot. Like I said, I'm like you guys know, I am not the greatest at video games. But fucking, we are going to, we are going to do this with stage four. It's over. It's over, dog. It's over. And I could not believe it. I immediately started singing We Are The Champions when I fucking did this. And alone in my living room at like fucking 2 in the morning. Singing like I just won the Super Bowl. Beautiful thing, baby. Beautiful thing. And what's this shit? Ice cream, bitches. It's a lifesaver. Even though I had a full health, hey. Okay. All right. Psych yourself up, because we are about to fight Dullahan, I believe is the name. It's based on an Irish legend, 
if memory serves, and this was his first Castlevania uh, appearance, the Headless Knight. So you just whack him once or twice and bolt. And this is why Maria is so much better than Victor. Or Richter. Why don't I keep calling him Victor? Richter. So much better than Richter. Because she has that mobility that can get you in and out super quick. So one or two whacks. GTFO. Okay, that's the way you want to be. Uh, and you know, once you once you learn to get the hell out of his way of his primary attacks, he's really not that big and bad. You know? He's not that scary. He reminds me kind of like Faker from He-Man. He's blue. He's got orange hair. And he's got that suicide attack, but y'all know by now that that attack when he dies is not going to kill you. Only one boss in this game whose final attack will kill you. And hope to God I'll be showing you that, that boss, before too long. I'm sorry these videos are taking a while to take out. I mean, I bought an SSD, so editing would be a little faster, but the games are getting harder, guys. The fucking games are getting harder. Stage player, baby. Stage player. All right, stage five. This one again presented. This is a really short, short stage. Really short stage. Pirate ship. So you know, it's got kind of a cool lineage uh, for Castlevania because you know uh, there is a history of, of pirates and, and ships and stuff like that. I remember Grant Dynasty from from Castlevania three. Um, but um, this is a shorter stage, but the boss is maybe. From what I've read, it's the hardest in the in this game in Rondo of Blood, and again, I spent probably two or three hours doing this, uh, just the boss, and another five to six or five to eight on on just mastering the level, and man, it's a trip. I like I said, I felt like I won the Super Bowl. I didn't think I could do it, and I was gonna quit, and I was gonna come up with some bullshit excuse for you guys, but um. At the end, you know, my girlfriend and my youngest daughter were sitting there on the other couch watching Investigation Discovery, and I'm just sitting here with the fucking sound turned down, listening to ID, Detective Joe Kenda, you gotta love him, and fucking like, I'm just like concentrating on, on the fucking game and trying not to let these fucking people disturb me because I know this is some life or death shit right here. And fucking believe it or not, believe it or fucking not, four beers in me, and fucking, I didn't think I could do it, and it happened. Woo, baby. Nature boy. Now, this is this is a cool part. This is a cool part. I fucking love haunted paintings. And, you know, it's like it started... There's a really great episode of a real Ghostbusters cartoon that has a haunted painting. And, of course, Ghostbusters 2, for sure, has fucking Vigo the Carpathian. Uh, uh, fucking, like... So I'm a big fan of haunted paintings. Fucking, of course, Portrait of Ruin is one of my favorite Castlevania games. I'm definitely gonna have to play that for y'all at some point. I want to go through the whole series. I want to. Don't know if I'll be able to because I don't like making like super long videos or like super long series. Although I've had some success with that before, so I'd love to go through the whole series for you. Anywho, we are up on that final pirate ship, and the graphics are really nice. This is definitely one of my favorite Castlevanias. Uh, not just because I grew up lusting after it so viciously, you know, I mean, I wanted to play this so fucking bad, and finally, God knows how much, 23 years later, 24 years later, I'm doing it, and what I love about this is it's not just in the castle. So often after Symphony of the Night, the tendency was to just be stuck in fucking Drax's castle, and I love Dracula, my favorite book, I love Dracula's castle, it's a great setting. But there's so much great spooky shit you can do, Konami. And you've done it in the past. You're on a, spot, you're on a pirate ship. You're in graveyards. You're fucking haunted swamps and shit. You can do so much. Burning villages. There's so many great spooky, hall, uh, you know, Dracula shit you can do. And they've fucking done it. And they did it in this. And in Portrait of Ruin, which is a more modern Dra uh, Castlevania game. It's, it's just, it's such a great series. And Portrait of Ruin... Uh, got out of Drax Castle by having the magical portal uh, paintings which could take you in any kind of spooky setting you wanted which was fucking fantastic probably one of my my greatest mobile gaming experiences you know and here we have the final run up to the big bad maybe the biggest bad some call Satan the great adversary but this is truly the great adversary of man and you can probably tell who the fuck I'm talking about up in here. 
He's a big fucking dude in all the Castlevania games. He's Dracula's servant, but really, a lot of folks think he runs the fucking show. And who's this? It's our Japanese-speaking friend, fucking Death. The Grim Reaper. And he's a real bad bitch in this one, man. Let me tell you, those sides get everywhere. And really the best strategy I could come up with for her was just spam your sub-weapon, run around, and throw doves everywhere. Just hop randomly, friggin', and just spam, spam your shit. Spam, your, spam everything you got and jump around. Hope, try to try, try and hit those sides so they don't kill you. Avoid those skulls. And when he drops here, just pretend he's dual hand again. Just pretend he's that headless knight dog. He's dropping, he's going pure melee mode. He's gonna be on that ground, he's not flying around. So you get in, two hits, bam, bam, you get out. One, one two hits, bam, bam, you leave, dog. Okay, don't hang around for that size because that is one hit kill, dog. All right, okay, well, almost one hit, but it takes a lot of fucking juice out of you. So just fucking bam, bam, go, bam, bam, go. Stick and move, baby, stick and move. You don't want to be on the end of that. And look at this shit. Look at this shit. Ah. Oh, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. Guys, you won't fucking believe how long we've all wanted that to fucking happen to death. Fucking gorgeous, gorgeous. And I've got a special treat for you guys. Of course, always the fun thing in the Castlevania series is getting that orb in the silliest position you can. And with Maria, that's not a hard thing. But please watch a beautiful super CD powered cinematic. Jackrel is a fucking giant. Oh, wait. And this may be the most story ever in a fucking Castlevania game. The longest cinema I can think of. Everything's really Japanese. Not the Dracula I'm used to. I'm kind of used to uh, Igarashi's Drac, you know, uh, with the goatee or the beard and the long flowing hair. Of course, any Dracula is a good Dracula. And look, he's so tender with the ladies. You've got to appreciate that. Now, you may recognize this uh, purple-haired chick from the intro. That is Richter's fiance. I don't know her name. But to be fair, nothing in here is English, except for the stage announcements and like press run to start and the menu system. That's it. Everything else is Japanese and the occasional German speech. And you know who that is, right? Shaft. You're damn right. You can tell they put so much work into this game. Beautiful, beautiful. Guys, this has been your buddy Horse to Cuffs. Thank you for watching. I will continue trying to do this for you all. Keep on keeping on, motherfuckers.